We can also consider the use of continuous auditing. Now, there have been many studies and examinations uh, concerning continuous auditing as opposed to the more traditional periodic audit reviews, especially when you consider that some of those uh, uh, times in between the, uh, the audits are on a yearly basis. Now, there's a lot of motivation for continuous auditing, including monitoring, let's say, of financial issues of the company, ensuring the real-time transactions uh, are, are safe, and they can also benefit from the real-time monitoring as well, especially when we're talking about looking for signs of anomalies or uh, of failures or something else that could affect negatively the impact of that process. Now, there is a distinction between continuous auditing and continuous monitoring. Continuous monitoring will involve tools that are based on an automated procedure uh, to meet the fiduciary responsibilities. That's a fancy term. All right, automated procedure. Let's think of one. Antivirus software. You download a file from the internet, you get an email, that automatically scans those documents to look for signs of malware. And, uh, and it does it without any prompting. It's just designed to continually monitor. And, uh, and what that does, that automation procedure, then is trying to, uh, to safeguard, as a control even, it's trying to safeguard um, your, your assets. And that's hopefully meeting the responsibilities that you have. Uh, as a continuous auditing, that's kind of a methodology that allows the independent auditors to provide written assurances on a subject matter. And they can contain the results of the continuous monitoring as a part of their auditing process. With both continuous monitoring and auditing taking place, you get what we can call continuous assurance, and, uh, and that's something good to have established. Continuous auditing tries to create a more secure platform to be able to avoid fraud, especially if people know that there is an ongoing auditing process. It's meant, you know, in some ways, as a discouragement against fraud. It's also designed to help avoid uh, you know, any real-time processes uh, aimed at the high level of financial control. And that's an important part of this, right, is we want to be able to know uh, that we can uh, try to avoid fraud or aim the continuous auditing at these really important processes so that we are constantly able to monitor, you notice, back and forth, right, but to uh, be able to assess how these controls are working. Some prerequisites exist for continuous auditing. They should include things like uh, uh, putting it on whenever there's a high degree of automation. All right, so in other words, continuous auditing is not something we're going to do on a control that may be very rarely used, but if it's a, a, or may have a lot of manual uh, intervention. But if it has a high degree of automation, continuous auditing is good because uh, it allows us, I mean, think about it, if it's got a lot of automation, that means not a lot of hands-on. And so without a lot of hands-on, you don't have people looking at it all the time. And so now by continuously auditing it, we can go and look at the logs and, uh, and observe the processes and look for signs of problems. Uh, when there's an automated and highly reliable process and producing information soon after or during the occurrence is another time when we should put in continuous auditing. And that might be considered as uh, parts of uh, credit card processing, right? Because as soon as I'm going through that process, it's producing information, it's uh, doing it during the occurrence, it's pulling bank funds and those types of things. You may also consider, uh, whenever doing the continuous auditing, uh, whenever an alarm triggers um, so that it, uh, you, know, you can report control failures. So that's important, right? If I'm watching this process, I've got continuous auditing on and alarm triggers, then we can look at that. Uh, it also helps us in uh, being able to quickly inform IS auditors of the results of the automated procedures, especially when an alarm is raised or an anomaly is detected. What does that mean? Again, because auditing was already on. Remember, this is something that is on when the event occurs, when the alarm triggers, when an alarm is raised, when an, the uh, anomaly is detected. Because we have the continuous auditing on, it allows us the ability to be able to look at that information and to see the results of what was going on with that procedure. You can think of it as having um, those closed uh, circuit TV cameras guarding you know, your, your front door. And, uh, you know, if you have it on, it's continuously, you could say, monitoring or auditing uh, that front door. And, you, and if somebody breaks in, hopefully you've got them on video. But it's a little too late to turn it on after the fact. So that's kind of the idea of this continuous auditing. IS techniques that are used in continuous auditing should work at a variety of data levels, which could include things like transaction logging, uh, now, transaction logging, that, you know, is, uh, when you think of the definition of a transaction, 
It means that uh, a series of events have to happen 100% or they're all rolled back. Nothing happens at all. That's a, a typical uh, operation of a database function. could be a financial type of function. Um, it could be uh, another time when you use this is uh, with query tools or statistic and data analysis, database management systems, data warehouses, neural network technology, um, you know, accessible business reporting languages are areas where you might consider using the continuous auditing.